salvation whoever holds on to my lineage will receive salvation for they are and indeed from them is the boat of salvation so Sayyidina Mahdi will be born in the lineage of the Prophet now we have learned from our pious predecessors and our teachers in particular that to speak about Mahdi salam, an individual needs to be extremely careful. We should not go into speculation regarding him. We should not go into suspicious matters regarding him. And indeed, if you know something about Mahdi salam, which you know will not be accepted by the Awam, then you do not disclose that information to the Awam because he is the Khalif of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran al kareem Inni, indeed I, ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa, have sent forth to the world fil ard khalifa, my representative. Often the commentators of the Quran al kareem have put this verse down as we, the Muslim community, are the representatives of Allah's deen. And the first of us, whether you're a believer or a non-believer, the first human being to be sent down was Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. And this was said by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the angels. وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels, I am sending forth my vice general, my representative, the biggest of the khulafa in the end of time, in the end of times, after the pious predecessors' generations have gone, the Salaf Salihin have gone, the Sahaba Tabirin, Tabir Tabirin, the best of the Khulafa thereafter will be Sayyidina Mahdi alayhi salam. The question shouldn't be, is he born or not? The question is, are you worthy of being in his army? It was asked to the Messenger Salawat could you describe his physical features to us? Sayyidina Nabi alayhi Abdul Salat wa Tamut Aslim said, about Sayyidina Mahdi alayhi salam, that his blessed face of Mahdi alayhi salam, <coughs> he said his face does not resemble my face. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi salam, said his face does not resemble my face. The face of Mahdi alayhi salam, will be as such that his nose will be slightly hooked. The nose of Sayyidina Mahdi alayhi salam, will be slightly hooked. And Sayyidina Mahdi alayhi salam, will not have the same complexion of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam either. About the complexion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The narration which was given by our master, Sayyidina wa Mawlana Ali ibn Abi Talib, Karram Allahu wajhul kareem, Imam al-Mashariq wa al-Maghariq. What did he say? He said the complexion of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was neither completely round as the moon, but it was not completely oval either. It was something in between. The complexion itself sometimes radiated so much light. As Sayyidina Abu Huraira said, Kashamsi tajri fi wajhihi. It was as if the sun was being issued from the face of the Messenger of Allah. Salawat wa salam alayhi wa ala alayhi. And as Abu Hilala radiallahu anhu said, that one time I looked towards the face of the Messenger of Allah Salawat wa salam alayhi. And then I looked towards the moon, and then I looked at him again, then I looked towards the moon. And I figured out that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa is even more beautiful than the moon, when the moon was in its fullest glory. 
Prophet. There was that much light shining from the face of the Messenger of Allah Salawat Rabbi wa salam But the Messenger of Allah Salawat Rabbi wa salam said about Mahdi salam that his complexion will not be the same as mine. His complexion will have a slightly red tint to it. Slightly red tint to his face. About Sayyidina Mahdi salam it is known that his father's name will be Abdullah and his mother's name will be Amina. The same names are the parents of our master Sayyidina Nabi alayhi of the salatu wa taslim Sayyidina Abdullah radiyallahu an wa Sayyida Amina radiyallahu anha So he will have the same names as the parents of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahba wa sallam Now there are two narrations given One narration is that Sayyidina Mahdi alayhi salam will be born in Madinatul Munawwara Others have said no he will be born in Sham in Syria but he will travel to Madinah al Munawwara at an early age. But there is no ikhtalaf, there is no difference of opinion amongst the Muhammadi that he will be seen close to the time of his declaration, going from Madinah al Munawwara towards going from Madinah al Munawwara towards Makkah al Mukarramah. He will be seen on the roadway. The Abdal of Shah, the forty Abdals of Shah, and about this particular narration. I read quite recently that uh, someone said that Ibn Daymiya said that this narration of the 40 Abdals of Shah is a weak narration. Whether Ibn Taymiyyah accepts this narration or not, Al Tabarani, Ibn Hakim, in the tafsir of Imam Jalaluddin al Suyuti, Muhammad Ibn Hajar al Skalani, Shah Imam Muhammad Raza Khan Fazil Barelbi, Shah Abdul Haq Muhaddis Dhelbi, Sayyidina Imam Abdullah bin Abi al Haddad, Sayyidina Abdul Hassan al Shadili, Shah Bahaudi Naqshban Muhammad Ubaisi al Bukhari, Shah Shahabuddin Sohar Wardi, Muinuddin Hassan Jishti Gharib Nawaz, Sayyid Usman Data Ali Hajveri. These are 12 amongst the 106 commentators of the Hadith who have said that this. Narration of the 40 Abdals of Sham is not weak, but it is a Sahih Hadith. You can check the narrations for yourself, my respected brothers and sisters in the Deen. And the narration is from the 40 Abdals of Sham. One of the Abdal will see him. Will see Sayyidina Mahdi alayhi salam going from Madinah al Munawwara towards Makkah al Mukarram. Then there will be a time where in the Haram, the sanctuary of Makkah al Mukarram itself, they will be doing the tawaf of the Kaaba. How do you say this in English? Circumulation? That word, that word there, the brother said. They will be walking around the Kaaba. Circumulation? That one. <laughs> I can't say the word properly, sorry. Whilst they will be doing the tawaf of the Kaaba, they will do the first round. Bain al Hajr al Aswad wal Maqam Ibrahim. Between Hajr al-Aswad and the station of Ibrahim alayhi salam, where the blessed stone is, upon which our master, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, stood to build the Kaaba al Musharraf. And the stone even recognized that today upon me, the feet of a messenger are standing. The feet of a prophet are standing. And that stone softened its chest, so as the feet of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam do not feel any pain. And about that stone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاتَّخُذُوا مِنْ مَقَامَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى Make the station of Ibrahim a place of worship. Pray upon that stone and Allah will accept your worship. <laughs> this was the feet of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. What can be said about the Na'alayn al-Sharif of Sayyidina Nabi alayhi abdullah salatu wa ta'ala If this is the maqam of Ibrahim alayhi salam, what is the maqam of Sayyidul Anbiya wal Mursaleen? <laughs> where his blessed feet have stood. What can be said about that stone itself? Think, ayyun ikhud al-Muslimun wa ikhwa, the na'alayn of Sayyidina Nabi alayhi abdullu salatu wa tamu taslim, jo sarbe rakhne ko mil jaye, na'alayn paake huzoor, to kahenge haan taajdhar hum bhi. If we ever get to put the na'alayn al-sharif of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon our head, then we will say, indeed, even we wear crowns on our heads. Why? Why do I mention this? What has this got to do with Mahdi alayhi salam? Because Mahdi alayhi salam will be upon the Na'layn al-Sharif of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will be walking upon the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Meaning everything he does and says will be in line with the prophetic traditions. 
Physically, he will be born in his lineage. Spiritually, he will be the true inheritor. When the first round happens between Maqam Ibrahim and Hajar Aswad, one of the Abdals, out of the 40 Abdal, the 40 chosen awliya of Sham, of beloved Sham, will be congregated in the Haram, and they will say, you are Mahdi alayhi salam. And he will turn and say, I am not the Mahdi alayhi salam that you speak of. And he will carry on doing his tawaf. During the second round, they will say it again. And he will say, I am not Mahdi alayhi salam. During the third round, when he says it, the Abdal will hold his hand. And they will say, let us take the oath of allegiance upon your hand. Let us take bay'ah. Bay'ah, let us become murids of yours. The Abdal of Sham will say this to Mahdi alayhi salam. A voice will be heard from the celestial realm. Hada Khalifatullah. This is the Khalifa of Allah. Give your allegiance to him. Mahdi alayhi salam will be declared then as the true Mahdi. Nare Takbir. Nare Risalat. Ulamai Ahle Sunnah. of Imam Mahdi salam and the fitna of the Dajjal. Of course, given the numbers here this evening, it seems to me that it is a matter of great interest to the young Muslims of Bradford as to when the Dajjal is coming and when Imam Mahdi salam is coming. Of course, a lot of this is hypothecated by those who make assumptions like Nostradam 
And those that make other hypothecations, like uh, would-be awliya and would-be of ghos and qutubs. But really, this sensationalism is nothing new. In the time of the Sahaba, in the time of Prophet ﷺ, one day, they were gathered in the Prophet's mosque and they said, Ya Rasulullah ﷺ, tell us about the future. Tell us about the end of time. So obviously it's a very sensational topic. It's a very um, emotional topic. It's a very, um, you know, much talked about. So even in that time, in the time of our beloved master, they all gathered, the men and the women, because of course in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, knowledge was available to men and women, as it is today in this room here. It wasn't exclusive to one gender. And in the presence of the Sahaba and the Sahabiyat, the Prophet ﷺ started, it was uh, just before the whole time. He sat on the mimbar and he started to tell them about forthcoming events in headline terms. And then he carried on his speech and it became Asr time. The Prophet ﷺ prayed Asr with his Sahaba. So it became Asr time. The Prophet prayed Asr and then carried on his speech. Maghrib time came, he carried on. Isha time came, he carried on. All night he spoke to them in headline terms, what's going to happen? The next Fajr came, the next Zohar came, he carried on telling them. Until, he said, and then there will be the Yawmul Qiyamah. All day, all night, he told them about what was going to happen. So I hope you packed your sleeping bags, because <laughs> that's what I intend to do tonight. To replicate, no, sorry, it's, uh, I've got to get back to uh, Hijaz. But anyway, I'm going to give you some of those summaries of what the Prophet ﷺ told us. But before I do, and I've, what I've tried to do is I've tried to uh, look at the whole body of hadith and give a summative interpretation of what it is that we should be looking for and what it is that we should not be hyping or sensationalizing. Because of course one day um, I met somebody uh, who told me that uh, uh, who came to visit me in Hijaz, I was sitting in my office, and he said, I have a letter for you. I said, okay, mashallah, personal delivery, excellent service. And uh, I knew him from about 20 years, and I said, uh, who is this from? He said, read it. So I opened the letter, and I read it, and I was slightly confused. I said, uh, tell me, who is it from? He said, it's from Imam Mahdi <laughs> I said, really? It's from Imam Mahdi oh my God. So I read it again and again. I said, where did uh, Imam Mahdi give you this letter? He said, well, I went into the mountains in Kashmir, and in a cave, I found Imam Mahdi And I met him, and I told him about you, and I said that you were a good chap. <laughs> so, and you know a thing or two about law, and you know because you're a barrister, and you know a thing or two about this, that. And I said, you're an excellent chap, and I think, and I recommended him that you should become his ambassador. <laughs> so Imam Mahdi said, well done, son, I'm going to write you a letter, go and give it to him. So I've given this letter. I said, okay, I read the letter and I thought, my God. <laughs> yeah. Because 
trust me, this, is, this was the fourth occasion I met somebody who told me they met Imam Mehdi in my 35 years of public life, this is the fourth occasion somebody told me. So I said to him, I said, listen, young man, what I want you to do is to fly back over. He said, no, can't do that. I said, why? He said, I have to take you with me. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the ticket. I bought the ticket. I thought, oh no, he's going to kidnap me. <laughs> take me to some mountains and sell me off to somebody. You know, I honestly, I read the letter. He was completely delusional. Because Imam Mehdi supposedly wrote half the letter in English, half in Urdu, half in Arabic, and half in squiggles that I couldn't understand. <laughs> and I thought, this is absolute nonsense that is being peddled here. I met somebody else who was a professional person. He told me, my murshid has told me that I must stop being a doctor, because he was a doctor. He said, my murshid has told me I've got to stop being a doctor, and I've got to learn archery. Because Imam Mehdi is about to come, and I've got to learn how to do archery. So when I do learn archery, I don't need to do medicine, I don't need to go into the hospital, I need to learn archery. And you know what he did? In the hype of it all, he sold his house, resigned at the hospital, believing this man who told him that Imam Mehdi was around here. And I said to this man, he was a very intelligent guy, obviously he was a doctor working in a hospital, he was a, a senior house officer. I said to him, when did uh, this sheikh tell you that uh, Imam Mehdi al is going to come? He said, the year 2000. It's the year of the Armageddon. And I'm pretty sure that this sheikh had seen a film somewhere. <laughs> you know, like you get the 2000 film and the 2012 film. You know, and all these Armageddon stories that, you, that we hear. So I said to him, is this really true that he said, he said, look, I've got a book here which he's written in which it says that Imam Mehdi is going to come in year 2000. So I thought, well, this is a book and I've got to really take it on its face value. So now when I met this sheikh, I said to him, have you written this book? He said, yes, I have. Year 2000 came. And I asked one of his khalifas, I said, uh, 2000 has passed, what happened? He said, you know, our sheikh has told us, he met Imam Mehdi and he said it was going to be the end of the world, but the problem is he's deferred everything, he's adjourned everything because he wasn't feeling well. <laughs> Now, I'm not telling you stories that I've heard or stories that... These are direct stories that have come to me. Now, I look at all... Of, I hear all of these stories. So, I ask people, do you actually know what the obvious sign is of Imam Mehdi salam? <coughs> People who have met him, people who say they know him, people who have said they know of somebody who knows him. And you know the reality is they don't even have the first clue about what the first obvious sign of Imam Mehdi is. And should I tell you what it is? The first and obvious sign of Imam Mehdi <coughs> is that he will have no bones in his body. Hmm? We should all say subhanAllah. Subhanallah. His physical structure will be total flesh. There will be no bone in his body. And as you meet him, you will, be able, you will not be able to feel any bone in his body at all. Completely flesh. And through the miracle 
of how Allah creates exceptional creation, He will have created the jasad of Imam Mahdi. So, Imam Mahdi is not a joke. It's not a hype. It's not sensationalism. It's a very serious situation. Now, it's not wrong to contemplate over it. I'm not advocating that. Because Prophet ﷺ taught us, go to the graveyard. It will help you reflect and help you focus your mind about death. Prophet ﷺ's hadith, many narrations, tell us to await the time of the Jal and Imam Mahdi Why? Because it helps us to focus our minds about the end of time. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah